Best behaviour ever. Yeah, keep the language clean now. <laughs> oh dear. This is this week's. Oh, thanks, Dave. Everybody mm. wanted to do something simple, and I thought, well, there's only one. Thing. <laughs> then I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking, oh, God, here we go again. There ain't no easy subjects. It's because we're all getting, everyone's getting better every week. I think we're all getting more critical of our own work. That's yeah, right. there's that. Um, is this? Uh, I thought it was good enough. We're well done. Yeah. How to draw? Oh dear. I I have to zoom in a minute. Can I zoom in on it? I couldn't make up my mind when I was skipping. I couldn't get it to click. Which one did you click? Actually, left of, the, of the stalk. Not that it matters. Interesting. You can see what I was saying on my notes about this week, as far as I could I can see, is about layering. But you, you know, especially in watercolours. <clears throat> you can do it on in the acrylics, Chrissy, you can you don't have to use solid paint out the tube. You can make it canvas wet and let the colours flow. So you could almost, especially to get that. The more you look at, it, the more it is terrible looking at these things because they don't. I print them out just to get a reference image, and it don't look anything like the one on the screen sometimes, or the nuances that you see on the on the computer screen are totally. Mm. More. I was going to pick up a an apple out of the um, garden because there's a, an apple tree around the back. That's the apples are just like that, the green ones. I've got a peach, but <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Didn't quite work. So, any thoughts? Anybody got any? I I don't plan. How it's going to go? I like to do it just off the cuff, really, on the fly. It makes it interesting. Color-wise, I think flesh is going to come into play here. Don't know why. And layering, so be warned. Could be a bit, bit messy. And I haven't masked. Normally, I. I think I would mask the inside of the apple <laughs> with some masking fluid so that then I could have some real fun or Hello. Uh, a real go at the background. Ah, yes. Yeah, so oh, well, I we'll, just we'll have a go. Are we off for time? Oh, I've been talking too much. Right, I'm change sorry. video. Move away from this. No, no, it's just fine. crack on. I didn't want them. Microphone. <laughs> Spotlight this. Take your shirt off. <laughs> it's not that it's not that it's not that that hot, but I was outside and it was quite chilly. But it mm. felt fresh. They said it was going to be really lovely weather this weekend, but I'm um, <laughs> I'm thinking, well, I don't feel that lovely about it. It was, I even had my hoodie on walking around the beach this morning. Oh, yeah. Didn't know I had a hoodie, did you? <laughs> my mum is 85. She bought me a hoodie for Christmas. <laughs> oh, I thought, that's, that's fast. nice. Yeah, Ooh. different. Yeah. Colour wise. So the, the, the um, Sketch wise, if you what you could do, I didn't, I don't know if I can do it. No, I won't do it on the, the original, I don't want a blank bit of paper. Is um, get a bucket, or well, I've got a, I've got my water bucket, put it down, I'll find something about the right size and just draw around it. You'll get a circle, and you think, oh, it's, apple's not a perfect circle, but by the time you painted it. 
<laughs> it won't be a perfect circle because if you can do that paint it perfectly all the way around you, you're better than me i won't be able to do it and the um the twerk the leaf and the what's it right let's go for it <coughs> I've got two palettes. I did tell a little bit of a porky pie. I was looking at it. I thought, hmm, how would you? I was putting different washes. Very often you do that. Put different um, colours. Let, you know, do one, let it dry and then go away and put another one and see where you if you can get something, dear, oh dear. Um, <laughs> similar to what, you know, give you a rough idea of what colours to use. And there's three colours involved here, is flesh or sand, June. Um, I tried indigo on what, and then put burnt umber on and raw sienna just to see what sort of earthiness I could get. I was thinking background, obviously, on that. Um, I did some more on another piece of paper. Ah, I mean, I was thinking leafy bit and what colours in there. And I was coming out with quite similar sort of veins, sand. This, I was going to do this in case anyone didn't know how to mix um sand or the juni color because not everyone will have it out of the tube like what i do only and i think i'll do that quickly let's put a bit of paper over the top here there's my you've got all these colors How do you? Oh, look at that. And that's so clean. <laughs> but as I say, I don't tend to, about you guys, but I, I tend not to, should work, not to think about like that so and so red, that so and so red, that's a, Oh, look at that. That's so and so. Well, I know that's so and so green because it's viridian or whatever it is, which is you can't use it on your own. I know that. That's that's a bit raw sienna. That's not yellow, is it? It's a bit duller. You've got yellows, orange. I've got a few blues. There's a light blue. I don't think of it in terms of it's a special blue that I've got to use. It's something that's going to affect what I do. Raw sienna, which is always a dull yellow it ain't yellow it's a milky <coughs> ground color if i mix if i put raw sienna that'll give us an earthy yellow color if i i don't know which one of these it is but i'm looking for raw uh, burnt sienna well it, it's not red it's off of it's between red and the raw sienna so i'm just going to go there for now so if you mix a bit of that with it that'll give us a a sandy color well it'll give me a flesh color anyway a fleshy color can't mix a lot of it up because this brush is soaking it all up as i do it let's mix a bit more water hang on raw sienna Add a little bit of that burnt sienna. That gives us a, but you've got a base, so you can add. So there's your flesh tint or your beach, your sandy color. But if you add a little bit of, take a bit, say, try the light blue first. Add the light blue to it. Now I'm getting into the realms of the, this is June or to other brands they might call it sand just by adding blue to that a light blue i'm get, i'm heading towards this keep going so 
obviously you can mix it if you've got a lot large area you want to mix up a load of it but you see how quick mm. and mm. it proves i mean to me that looks pretty damn similar to that just out of those three colors and if you want it you you've got more control doing it this way as well in the if you think your beach is a is a darker sand add a darker bit of blue in it and you'll get it see what i'm getting at so using the stuff out at the, the tube is convenient but it you don't have to say you lose a bit of control but i just thought i'd do that for people that are watching or thinking i ain't got june and he's going to use june how what do i do so that's all it is really three colors and if, if this is if these are watercolors you know called specific they're, they're all called specific colors, but they're all made out of the three red blue and green colors primaries so you shouldn't get afraid of if you haven't got a specific color you just got to think up a way of making it and it's going to be out of the three primary colors right that's that's your fiver over of you've earned it now <laughs> next next bit ah i, I i'm i'm in two minds it's unusual for me i usually make decisions decisions on the on an instant but i don't know about this i was thinking but that little bit of color that i just mixed up i think just to i'm going to make the leaf damp for a sec perhaps a little bit of damp on that that's a bit of rigor in a smaller brush from that. I'm going to use a bit of that color yeah. on the leaf. The beauty of mixing your own um, shade of that is also you don't get spurious blends of color. Because I'm convinced that the two that I always advocate in, the flesh tone and the dune colour, I'm convinced that they've got um, gouache in them or something like the, a white binder. Because they're not, when you do it with the, this way with the watercolours, just mixing them up, they have that. It, they have transparency that you're supposed to get in watercolors, but those are more opaque, if, which makes me think they've got. I was going to say chalk, but it's not. It's it's just like gouache. I just wanted to do that. I'm going to let it dry. <clears throat> just thinking. That was a big sigh. <laughs> no, that do. I'll let that dry off. Right. I'm going to make a cup of tea or something now. <laughs> now I'm going to make the the rest of the paper wet, but not got to somehow go around the apple. The lady on the um, TV program I was on about last night, the artist there, she's one of, she does portraits as a, that's her thing. And she paints her canvas black first, just as a heads up. It's not, if you're using opaque colors like oils that she does, that's the traditional way of doing it. You paint the back, the canvas all one dark color first. And then because the paints are opaque, you put all the light colours over the top. I'm black I've got some black canvases. I've just fished one out thinking, yep, that'll do. Yeah. Wow. 
Yes. It is a funny mm -hmm. way of doing it. I hope we don't run out of time. I'm spending a lot of time putting water on a piece of paper here. <laughs> well, I want it to be fairly moist. Because um, I'm going to use, obviously, to mix up June to cover the canvas. It will take all oh, the paper. It will take quite a lot of paint. So I'm, I'm just using this big mop brush to grab a load of it. You know, so I haven't put any water on the inside of the apple. the fruit it might blend in but you need lots of water because i don't want it to dry too quick because i want to put an extra layer on i'm looking at my chart it's going to be i'm going to be really brave <gasps> that was close I have got indigo in this palette, but a really dark blue would do. That's indigo over there. Just so happened that I've got a wodge of it, or I did have, over here. I think it's indigo. Yeah. This is just about the darkest blue that's around but if you're in doubt do, do a bit on the edge first i oh, know but you can see why i wanted it soaking wet because i want it to blend in i don't know if a brush is totally necessary on this normally so i want the paints to i want it all to meld in into sort of one delightful tone which is going to be hard without putting the masking fluid in inside the apple because you're always going to have to be cautious. Good ex good ex I see. Oh, I just want it to settle down a bit. Quite like the um thought of The cross lines, one line going up the top. Got a funny feeling it will dry quite interestingly. And when we come down to the base. We use, um, probably use this brush, my tissue. So I can actually lift a little bit of paint off. This is more in it. I can always put it back and put a line across there, which is quite, quite trying. Not worried about the top. If you've got one. I think one of them, well, if you in this tray, I bought this Ron Ransom cake brush three weeks ago on it, and I haven't used it yet. I haven't got a, I haven't found a use for it. 
I remember um, a lady, Lorna, at, our, at the art class. She used to use one all the time for every painting. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I'd forgotten that. <laughs> she did, didn't she? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, she used to have um, Ron Ranson's Green Book. It's a, it's a paperback book. We love this style. She's, fortunately, she's gone to the Art gallery in the sky, or oh, art studio even. I'm just using the brush to dab a. I put a pencil line there, so I just want to put, a, make it do something. That's about it. You can see that the because I put all that water on, and I didn't scrub it like this with the brush. You know, really go hard. I was just doing it really gentle strokes. It's drying back in a graduated tone manner. But looking at my little tester, you can see what I was, I've got, I'm over this side at the moment. To get to there, I'm gonna have to dry it off and put some burnt umber on, maybe. But it's yeah, it's looking okay. I'm not worried about the um, the apple. Well, should be maybe while that's drying off. Get a rigger. Have this every week. Put a rigger down. And can't find it. Build this up a bit with that colour that I mixed up just right from the start. Raw sienna, burnt sienna, and a little tinge of blue. You can see about watercolours, it's, when you're starting out, it's a bit hit and miss because things dry, dry back in such a way, it's not always easy to, gauge or judge how much colour to put on because when it dries it it fades or it absorbs into the I'm not being too cautious about too serious about this bit because I'm going to at some point I've got to paint the apple if you're if you've got time and you're at home and you're when you're doing this when you do yours it might be a, you could do what i just crossed my mind then was to paint the leaf first and then mask it and then you can do the apple oh. but i'm just going to do a base color dry it off and then put another color over the top seems to have settled down you can see it's not too many brush strokes there, even though I was going around it. There's a bit of one there, but it's dried back quite well. The boring bit, watching paint dry. <laughs> Just before we make it all wet again. So I turn it upside down for the next stage. I think you try it on one half at a time.
Yeah. So anyway, ordinarily, I'd probably leave that till it was bone dry and then come back. This paper is the Lang Langton Langdon. Is it Langton or Langdon? The paper I use now, I'm back on the Langdon. That's Bockingford, so it's not that one. I don't know. Thought I had a pad with it in. A pad of it. That's why probably why my um tester samples don't come out the same on the uh, <laughs> on the proper painting. I'm just gonna turn it upside down for a sec. And then get my big brush. Hopefully, I haven't got too much dirty water in there. I'm just going to do the same again this time. Just on the top half for a minute. Just not press too hard. So I don't want the paint to re rehydrate, which is why I say normally I'd leave it to dry naturally for quite some time. See, it's starting to move. One second. And grab some burnt umber. Try using the same brush. Yeah, I will. I've got burnt umber in my palette. Uh, just over here. Da, da, da. I'm determined to use all the paint in these um, little wells to um, clean the palette out. Might need to add a bit of blue to this. Conscious. Yeah, a little bit of blue. What was needed, I think, to the burnt amber. Hopefully, it will dry nice. But I won't introduce any more new colors. So I've got this theory that any more than three turns to mud. Just let it drizzle about. I need a bit more blue at the top bit. I'm never going to get it ridiculously dark because I'm using... watercolors so I'm never gonna get pitch black I don't want it either I want it to be ethereal <laughs> whatever that means well ethereal light isn't it I'm just using the tip of the brush to drop it in drop in some blue and burnt umber which is my Doing that. I want it darker up here. Towards the top. Keep going. Did say it would be about layers today. It's got a nice point on it, this brush. Even though it's a whopper. Supposed to be the fun bit, this. <laughs> well, must admit, there's no right and wrong, or is there? 
in your mind's eye, there probably will be. And I'm just going to extend this bit over here. That'll do. Mm -hmm. I need clean water on my brush. A little bit of clean water. Because I've turned it up the other way now, so all the paint's running down towards me. But clean water will let it drizzle on former. Tidy up the edge a bit with that. I think I could put my hand on the inside there. Using the very point of the brush to edge back to my pencil line while it's wet. And there's a big icky there of some description. Don't know whether to try and flick it off or not. Just let it dry, I think. Sometimes flicking those bits off can end up making more of a mess and leaving it alone. I think I need a bit of tissue here. Yeah. There's only clean water on the brush, but I notice there's a big pool forming here. So I'll try and spread it around a bit. You put a lot of water on, a bit carried away, I think. Keep the board level for a sec. See if I can just lift it off with a bit of TLC. Dry brush. Damp brush. Just lift it off. It's just the excess water. But I want it to look, it's that classic French, oh, wait. <laughs> no, I think it's a bit of paint, and of course as I move it, it paints, oh dear, go on, flick it on, I'm committed now, keep going. <laughs> yeah, it was. I think it's a little bit of burnt, yeah, burnt sienna. So it is local colour. Just flicking it around. Try and blend it in with the water. That'd be okay. That'll dry off. Yeah, much water is all dribbling down here. Look. Lift it off with the Russian bit of tissue. I want it to drizzle down a little bit. Give me that sort of feel. Mm. A little water there. See if it fills itself back up again. There you go. <laughs> Amazing. Clean off the sides. It's great fun doing this. Reminds me when you do um, some dramatic skies as well. You do exactly the same thing. And then you sort of tilt the water around, trying to get it to form nice cloudy type shapes. You don't need to go that way. Mm -hmm. Very nice. All right, the base is feeling a little bit left out, so we'll add some more into this. Stick with that nice colour that we started with. Getting some rum backs. So, what was the colour I mixed up? Bit of raw sienna. 
all up a raw sienna a little bit of i think it's burnt sienna it could be english red i don't know and then just twicked in some light blue where's it light blue and add some water there you go and if you want to make it darker which i think i might do add a little bit stronger blue and just drop it in just gonna put a line of color there and use a brush to clean water just to tease it down a bit i think the lighter blue would have been nicer actually make it up as you go along we have got two pails of water here one cleaner than the other at the moment just putting clean water at the bottom of these i want them to i'm not uh, the board's not at a that acute angle it's only about Five, ten, ten degrees, fifteen at the most. It's the classic watercolor dilemma: put paint on and then start taking it off. Why do we? Do well, it's the same as skies, isn't it? Do it a lot there. You sort of put it on and think, "Well, oh, I need a bit of cloud." cloudiness here so you start taking it off this has got a lovely run back here i don't know what to do about that I'll leave it alone i think burnt burn amber and I'm glad I've got a black canvas <laughs> what was that i'm glad i got a black canvas <laughs> <laughs> well yeah still soaking wet so i was hoping i could put a very thin line in without bleeding the paint bleeding too much i don't it doesn't matter i can lift it off a bit that do oh see how dark it was <laughs> Hence my reticence and being careful. Put a few dabs on. Because the paper's wet, it's going to spread a bit, which is what I kind of want. Well, what I think you should want. Then put clean water on it. And just underneath the little line that you put, just on the very edge of it, and then it will blend in. Keep bleeding away. I'm going to be brave here. Oh, I see what I've done. What an idiot. Never mind. That bit was supposed to be a few. This bit was supposed to be here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Never mind. That's supposed to be there. In a perfect world, it all goes perfectly. In this world, it's not so perfect. That's why I use the big brush. I'll get a similar effect. It might. Wow. This is real watercolor, this is. All right. Band on the run. Are we having fun? Hmm. Oh, 
almost getting to the stage where I'm going to dry it off now. All right for Chrissy. She just puts a dollop of white white on it. Well, job done. <laughs> Just going to put a few lines here. Lift off a bit of paint here and there. Be all right, we can tidy it up, can't we? Hmm. Well, I'm not unhappy. <laughs> Harold said, why don't we do a, a still life, something easy, straightforward? It's never like that. <laughs> Not that I'm looking for a scapegoat. God, just lightly dry it off now. That is brave. Even though there's a big pool of water up here, so I never know. I'm not quite sure what's going to happen. Yes, Mark We can run back three million years. Oh, we lost a pallet of paint and put it under there. Ding, ding, ding. Right then. Nice and dry. Keep turning that over with that horrible woman in it. <laughs> I painted it. So she, <laughs> it's my fault. Okay. I've got a really careful here because this is bright really bright i think i'm going to stick with the theme though get my brush damp i think i might be better off sitting down for this mm. um, so we can go and look. make as much of the apple damp as i can Used to be my thing today. Make something damp and then throw a load of paint over it. What's wrong with that? Well, it's supposed to be clean water, but it's hmm. a bit of the yellow on it. Not far off the colour, is it? I just want to 
put a base wash down just use subtly increasing blends of yellow These are good brushes, aren't they? Have a nice point on the end. At some point, we've got to introduce a little bit of green. Don't mind if it blends a little bit into the stalky bits. I think it'll probably add to it. I, don't know why, I just thought we're Rolf Harris then. Dear, oh dear. I need, I need help. I'll start whistling. <laughs> Give me a good thump. There's a little bit of green, which is the green in there, which is the same as the origin. origin type green over here but mixed with the yellow it should look shouldn't look too bad i don't mind if the apples extra green it's all about just blending it what i might try do so I want it a bit more yellow it's almost a yellow apple it's so subtle green not worried about that side because it's in shadow I think I've just had to build up some more yellow in it everyone sees it different anyway don't we Good exercise for um, brush control there. Drawing lines, you'll enjoy doing that. If you can, try and think of a, a ball shape. And make your brush strokes effectively curvy. I'm off time. Yeah, half eleven. All right, it's okay. Don't know why. Got no sense. <laughs> time. Got plenty of time to fix it, or not. The lady last night doing the portrait I think it was up to about the day before they're supposed she was supposed to you know meet up and display it so up to that sort of 24 hours before she was gonna, she's gonna stick a knife through the canvas she was so upset <laughs> or so um not happy about the picture so when you feel it's not going right console yourself into you're not alone everyone we all get it the best of the artists get it it's gonna lift a few bits out of you yeah. <laughs> Next thing, we need to put a bit of shadow on, don't we? 
ideally, one way you could do that, think about it, is if you take your colour wheel and look at the opposite colour on the colour wheel, any colour wheel will do, it will tell you what colour is better, is the shadow. So if it's yellow, yellow, purpley will, on top of the yellow, will give it a nice shadow. So we've got a greeny, so it is a purpley colour, which is fortunate really, because most of the shadow tones I've mixed up are that sort of, there's one here, sort of a purpley colour. So anyway, take a, hopefully it's still damp. I'm just going to put a, a layer of it around here. It's a good exercise doing this because it's um, having to use graduated tones. We'll read about those in books and you think what the heck are they on about then one day you have you're doing it and you think oh that's what it is basically all it is is having damp paper and letting the paint blow let it do its bit a bit reverse really i'm putting shadow in before i paint the Leave. Move on with that. That's as a good reminder. Let's take the edge off the brush. Sorry, I'm blurbing. But there's no there's no reason why you can do a bit and stop and come back, let it dry and build up another layer, which is what I probably have to do here. But the shadow works really well anyway. Won't do any harm with it. Use it as a marker for things yet to come. Anybody been on holiday lately? No. They were on about James and Mel on about holidays. We seven days of fun. I don't think I could cope with seven days away. Three or four. I even looked up Butlin's mine head. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Um, I'll, well, we spent youth, we spent a lot of time then as a kid. You know why? Heidi Hyde campers. Just put a um, couple of bits of shadowy tone on the leaf where I think it's they won't be the final bits of shadow but they'll just gradually build it up now oops got a line of paint clean water on the brush if you're dry, you can just blend it in. Just if you're wondering how to tidy up the edge. We've got loads. Yeah, it's quite a limited palette though, isn't it? I haven't used that many colours. I'm going to put a line of shadowy colour along there. Stop where the apple is. And go back. It's 
ancora là non ho Yeah. Wonder if... How's Gordon, eh? He's, he's got the cough that I've got, but he's all right, thank you. We've both got a cough from when we did go away. But we've tested and it's not COVID, thankfully. Go on that again. No, our friend has. Chris knows them. Um, we were going to a, a funeral sort of gathering tomorrow, a wake, I suppose you call it. Um, and our friend can't come because she's got COVID. Oh, isn't it? Yeah. You forget it's still it. out there, yeah. isn't it? Blue my hairdresser cancelled because she's got COVID. And my daughter had it a couple of weeks ago as well. Really? So. Yeah. Yeah. Not as bad. It's is definitely it? still yeah. around. It's yeah. Still yeah, it's still pretty miserable. Mm. Well, fingers crossed that you stay clear in. Yeah, I'm, I'm dosing myself up with steroids and things, which I don't like, but um, yeah. I'm hoping to keep going. <laughs> fingers crossed. Don't make me laugh, though, because I should cough. Yeah. <laughs> okay, make you laugh. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> 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 Got your birthday coming up too. So you don't want to get poorly. <laughs> yeah, I don't do birthdays. <laughs> I, I do. You interfere usually <laughs> and, and do it for me. But, um, <laughs> you're usually very kind. But I, 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 you know me, I hide away from everything. I know you do. <clears throat> you're silly. Sorry? I said you're silly. I know, I just am. That's all the way. I've been like it all my life, really. Yeah. Um, very shy. <laughs> That's what comes to being an only child. You haven't yeah, had to quite, stick up for yourself or Yeah, quite possibly. Yeah, mm. you've got nobody else to rely on, so you have to fight your own battles. So I just avoid any battle. <laughs> <laughs> Fair Probably enough. Some difference. Well, let's hope that um, Ellingham is okay this year. Yes. Looking forward to that. Yeah. This is the all the meat. Forecast is a bit wet, isn't it? Yeah, typical. It's the pouring bit now, isn't it? We could, all we could do is put a it's line of paint and then clean water to use some that I'll show you. Take a bit of our shadow colour, which goes around crimson and blue. Yeah, very good. Put a line of paint on. Just painting the line of the And just let it fizzle away. Turn your board at an angle, clean water on the brush, and just tease it away. Just slowly, slowly, tinsel and crackers, slowly, slowly. I'll do it here, Let's show it a good, a line of darker colour. Maybe I'll do it darker so it shows up a bit more. Just doing it down the edge, lift the brush off. Oops, don't mean to do that. <laughs> Wiggle, in, wiggle your brush in clean water. Albums and things. Tap, the ed, tap the edge if you want to get rid of any um, go up excess water. She's on a puddle. And then just go along the edge of where you've just put the line of colour. Just let it soften it down. And gradually it'll... You'll get the... Um, I want to go and get a battery tomorrow when we go. It's yeah. definitely a, an exercise of working wet and wet painting anyway. And how long? You'd be surprised how, how much you need to do. You know, how much of it. There's line of colour, dark colour. Go right underneath the apple there. Make it a bit darker, actually. It's burnt umber and uh, blue. Which is the real dark 
that I always tend to use. Wiggle the brush off the water, tap off the excess, and just go just underneath where you've painted and it'll, it'll flow down. Hello. Just keep doing that until you get bored. This leaf thing, I've been teasing bits of the um, sandy flesh colouring. I have got much left here and it's got mixed up with shadow. But it's still working. Still damp. The leaf won't show up until we put the really darker shadows in there. But I've got still more to do here. Um, Kind of painted out. I never wanted to be a botanical artist. So it doesn't come out totally botanical. Don't blame me. It's not in my DNA. But that's the only way I know how to do it. It's just make it damp and tease extra bits in. That could be a lot darker there, couldn't it? Go on, be brave. While it's damp, just look for a shape. But one thing you you should get out of doing this is um, learning how to control the water. You know, that, that sort of subtle blend where you put a, a blob of dark colour in. Clean brush, tap off the excess. You can even and just let it flow underneath. It's quite rewarding when it comes off and it looks really nice and soft and subtle. And uh, I'm using a, a sort of rain stumpy brush. What would you call it? Detail brush. Want of a better word, but it's just a, a short pointy one. As against a nice rigger. <laughs> We're doing little detail-y bits. I noticed that this the leaf has got like little spiky bits in so I'm just putting them in with the rigger just push it in using dark paint. Needs to go up there doesn't it? Clean water even on the rigger you can do exactly the same thing. Clean water on it and just push push the paint out and around. After about three days <laughs> of diddling, you'll find you think, "Cool, oh, blimey, that looks like a bit like an apple." <laughs> um, it's really it's really weird because you don't actually. I don't know if there's any paint on there. I think so. Yeah, you don't actually real focus on the object that you're painting. You're sort of looking at different shapes and shadows and just rubbing them in like that, clean water, dabbing it off, and then smoothing it down to blend it into the so you get that nice soft feel to it. The leaf I've used, I've stained with the same colours actually. I've put the sand colour on first in various shades. While it's damp, dropped more of it in. And now I can use burnt umber and blue as a dark. 
and our shadow colour. Well, we can always mix some up if you're scared of it's just Alzeria and Crimson. Add your blue and a little bit of burnt sienna usually gives you a nice shadowy tone. It's a bit browner with that in. But that's that's the one I mix and that's the one out of the tin. So looks like the one out there tin's got a bit of burnt amber in it to make it darker. Awesome. Once you've got that colour, we can see if you can, oh, I did put pencil lines where I thought the veins of the, veins of the leaf were, but they've long disappeared. So I have to reinvent any twiggy bits just using the rigor. Just that. It's the trouble with the matter if it's watercolour or anything, really. You spend a lot, a lot of time redrawing what you drew because the lines of, you've painted over it. <laughs> Oh, life is such a chore at times. I want to get it roughly. The one there? Yeah, there's got to be one there. Let's mark them back in. Stun it over there. Probably find you need to go in watercolour anyway. Probably have to go over it a couple of times just to. make them stand out a bit because they, they will fade oh, a couple there what a line of dark colour here but as you the more you look at it the more you'll see um, mm -hmm. Some of these paintings are a lot to do in a short period of time, aren't they? To get it dude off. I think that's the that's the stalk now, isn't it? No, that's the leaf. You go down there, add yourself to me. You just pull up her thumb, the fleshy tone in there. For that stalk and then drop in the dark <clears throat> on top of it. There's no easy way, is there, of saying, dirty, 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 do this, do that, and you'll get this. This it's it's not that simplistic painting. It's a matter of following. going to say you're following your heart but you're just just combining the whole lot eye brain coordination and a little bit of technical skill going in but the biggest one i'd advocate is doing what i just did there put a blob of color on then clean water and just Find the edge of it and let it let the water work its magic or not. <laughs> oh dear. 
Yeah, fair enough. But if you can do it the other way, I'll do that now. You can put clean water down, but this is already damp anyway. But the other way, if it was dry, you put clean water down. Need a bigger brush, really. You've got about three hairs on this rigger. Put the put the water down, and then take a a little dollop of paint and put the paint on top of the water. You think you get exactly the same result, but I don't think you do. I think it there's a subtle difference, especially when it dries. And while it's damp or wet, if you look at it and you think, oh, it needs a bit more, a bit more darkness, you know, a bit more dark on it, do it to the top of it. So you've put clean water at the bottom and it's flowing down. So put your dark bit on the top and then it won't spoil it. It will add rather than take away. It's the um, observation is key as well, because you're always looking at the, well, I do anyway, I look at the sheen on the paper. Because sometimes it, you'll look at it and think that's drying back nice. And you'll get to know after a while when when it's at a certain point. It's not bone dry. It's just sort of okay to put a little damp splodge of water on if you want to, like I'm going to do here. You just put a very subtle wash of some dirty water there. It was a little bit of shadow, it's just shadow over there. I don't know why I've got this inkling that it needed to be a little bit darker over there. Then you can get real fun. Angus! Apple number five, Mr. Monkeys. Mm -hmm. I won the lottery <laughs> Way last night. I got an email saying good news about your lottery, lottery ticket. Oh, how much? Was, was it a fortune? Obviously not, or else it'd have been away somewhere. Uh -huh, that's true. <laughs> I probably wouldn't be having this conversation, would I? <laughs> no, no, that's very true. Yeah. Well, every little helps, as they say. Yeah, I've got a fiver towards the next ticket. Oh, good. <laughs> Just nice to be noticed. Well, I had an email. They sent me an email because I do it online. Good news. <laughs> so I, well, I'm not checking the emails. I, you have to sign in to find it, and I can't do that on the phone. So I was walking out the dog up the beach with a dog telling him we went we might be on another beach next week <laughs> <laughs> now he's disappointed <laughs> oh, I'm, not, I'm not gonna i'm not gonna pretend that we ain't going i'm just using i'm i'm just using the rigor now diddling away thinking where shall i put some extra darks. Here and there, and I've got my palette. I've just got two pools of paint. One is the shadow colour that I just mixed up, and the other is burnt umber and blue over here. So I'm just alternating between the two. See how it turns out. But as it dries back, you'll get you'll you'll invariably get some runbacks. I call them runbacks. They're sort of they're lines, you know, the, where the paint's dried. I have one coming, developing up here in the background, blooming. I think some people call it. They're blooms. Sometimes, quite often, you 
tend to ignore them until they're really dry until when the painting is dry and then you can look at and sort of either incorporate them into the picture or just wash them out just using the rigor on the edge of the thing up here the fruit I think um, it does a little bit more. Come on, add a little bit more um, work here to push it away from the thing. Tempted to put some here as well. And then here. I don't know why I'm quite liking this. I've got like a white edge here, <coughs> which I'm tempted to leave alone. See what it looks like when everything's bone dry. But you can see the, the um, you get the gist where you just sort of put a little bit of paint on. A little bit dark. That'd be brush off. If you learn nothing else today, you've nailed it. Because that's all you need in watercolour, basically. <laughs> bit of water. Do it the other way. Like I said, just so happens that my water's dirty. The water, I just dabbed it in there and shook it off and it came out off the brush. <coughs> well, watercolour, you can use, use that to your advantage. Because sometimes you need such a delicate tone of shadow that's all it is it's just I, I must have heard me say it a thousand times just add a bit of dirty water to the picture which is what I'm doing now really wobble it around well if you can when you're doing it try and sweep the brush in a curvy way you know if you're trying to make something look like a curve the chances are well the only real you can do it with the the shadows and that will form a sort of ball shape but if you do it with your brush strokes like if i come over this side make it damp here i'll put this is just dirty water but from there if i go towards the middle with the clean water it should push the I'm just rehydrating those little lines that I put earlier it should make them make the apple feel a little bit rounder let's put a little bit of that's why I like using my edge of my board as a palette because you you can't it, a lot of the paint absorbs into the paper but so you can't get that much of it on your brush like that but it's usually just enough you know to give that dirty splodge subtle i think it's I've said it before, I think it's it's always amazing how you get watercolour painters that are not like me, that sort of little wimps, but really big blokes, you know, overweight or whatever, and they've got such a delicate um, way with the brush and the colours. You'd think, you know, he's a bruiser, you know, <laughs> big, he's a bricklayer, picks up 20 bricks and one hand like you know 
and then he gets hold of a brush and it's so so nice it's so delicate so size doesn't matter when it comes to this sort of thing i'm pushing it away now it's getting tired i'm going not me the painting's getting a bit tired the paper it's got I've been bashing it away for quite long enough, I think. Mm. I don't know what it looks like on screen, but it doesn't look too bad for where I've stood here. I think I, there's a few bits I could beef up a bit. A bit of raw sienna, a uh, bit of burnt sienna. Add it into that shadow cover. But I'm only sticking with basic three or four colours anyway, so I think I'll just put a bit on the stick. Stalk, sorry. A bit of raw sienna. Build it up. I like that. Where it joins as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sienna. My favourite warming the picture up colour. Clean water, just fizzle it out. See what happens. Yep. Right. Let's have a look. Where are we with this? Mm -hmm. Bit of burnt amber. Just say I'm not adding any new colours now, I'm just consolidating with what I've got. Burnt umber. Probably help this. Just pointed with this bit. I was hoping to get more of a The feeling of an edge. I wonder if I could use a bit of dry brush. Dry brush? What's dry brush? We get a brush out of the pot of water and you dry it off. A bit of tissue, no, it's a bit of a clean bit. So if it's done its work, this piece of tissue. It's <laughs> it's <laughs> <laking> <laughs> It's, it's been in my hand all the time doing that. Um, yeah. What was on? A bit of dry brush. So you can dry a brush off in the tissue. Stick it in some paint. Stick it in there. Take the edge off and just put it on. That's too much, see? That's not dry enough. <laughs> Wanted to give it a feeling of being speckled. -y. <coughs> but the thing to do is not to panic. Panic doesn't call, doesn't solve anything. Want to paint in any? Bit like all these things, you get, the bit that you want is the bit that you get at the end. The bit down the bottom is not too bad, but there's an old this brush is drawn. Should be able to swish it around a bit. Come on. Irony is, it's starting to feel like it's an apple floating on water, <laughs> <laughs> which is interesting. Quite like it. Mm. Now I've said it, I'm stuck with it. <laughs> but what I will say is, just to prove what I was on about earlier, that flesh is a really neat colour for, if I can get a dry brush feel on the flesh colour, 
มันตาไปเอ็นนะ We almost changed this picture to make a reflection of the apple on the water. And it'll look really fascinating. Um, let's not get too arty farty. Better stick with the with the meaning. Because hmm. I don't want people. I don't want to get too too complex because we were really complex the last couple of weeks. Mm. 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 What I'm going to do though, I'm going to turn upside down. I'm going to go back to where I was at square one, stage one. I'm just going to get some of the sandy colour, the dew, and knock knock this back a bit using my big brush i've not wetted it i'm just relying on the amount of water that's in the brush it's, it takes quite a chunk of water it's the june just one color just knock it back So there's no water in the brush. It's it's sticking at a funny angle. Let's go look. How clear is that? <laughs> well, you have still got the option if you want it to add water to it to make to make it flow a bit. Just thought it wanted the picture needed knocking back a bit. But what I will do is add some water, turn it out the right way, add a little bit of water where it meets the apple, and let that that wash blend down. But it's not harmful in the colour sense because it's one of the colours that I well is the colour that I put on right at the start. So just clean water on there. See if I can blend, let that blend down a bit. I don't mind the blue or the tone on it, but if I don't put water on it, it won't blend in. Hmm, quite pleased with that. It was a brave move, but it will dry. It's just clean water on the brush. I'm just trying to get it to run. Not into the apple there. Not that it really matters that much. It will dry back. Hmm, quite nice. Don't know why I'm drawn to add in some white highlights around here as well. Bear in mind that I'm much darker, uh, much deeper um, compositional wise. So I've got all this down here, which I don't really need. Very good. I've got some. Just to show that I'm not a one-trick pony, these are pastel pencils. So you can have great effect with these. Add in highlights or low lights, whatever you like. Oops. Or throw lights because it rolls away. And I've got one of these swordfish right me so there's no reason in watercolor why you can't add plastics while it's damp and wet like this they'll blend in as well 
So it's probably better to do it when it's bone dry if you want to get a really serious highlight. Sometimes I used to do it a lot in some pictures. When it dries, it dries back really well anyway. It's not going to do it on here because it's the paper's too wet. So, but just a heads up that, that it's a that it's a doable to um add texture or highlights to your picture. God, I've been talking a lot today. I can always tell my voice gets softer and softer. I'm singing in the the old fogies tomorrow as well. Old oh, fogies, you are one. Well, you know what I mean. The people in the day centre. Mm -hmm. I've got a few new songs. Oh, what was it? I've got it in my head. Elvis. I haven't done any Elvis for ages. It's never. It's funny, isn't it? I like, don't dislike Elvis, but he's never in my psyche. I never. I'm doing. I just can't stop believing. Ooh, thank you very much. Yeah. And if Beauty of White is, I just mull around with it. And it'll blend in quite nicely. Here and there. But it does fade back. So you start off thinking, oh, that's, that's just what I wanted. <laughs> and then you come back an hour later and go, oh, <laughs> where did I, I thought we painted white on there. It's a bit like, um, if you've ever done it, if you've got a, I remember doing it in a, in a hallway in Western Supermare when I lived there, sort of scumbling or with paint you, or ragging, you get that sort of random, old, distressed almost effect, don't you? I did it here when we moved here years ago, but Mel painted over it. It wasn't that good, I don't suppose. Thank goodness for the Reader's Digest DIY manual. Kept me going over a few years, I'll tell you. Before Google, you didn't have, any, or YouTube, you didn't have any sort of instructions like how to, on it. You had to just pay somebody to do it or find a man at the pub or a lady <laughs> Red, amber and blue yeah well, you've got to be politically correct see <laughs> even in this game i'm not biased i'm sure i've got um What do you call it? Um, boiler, gas pit. Um, booked in for a couple of weeks' time. That's usually a lady, plumber, mm -hmm. gas engineer. Oh, it's really, really lovely, huh? <laughs> I was teasing me, aren't I? When she says, oh, yes, things ain't like they used to be. I said, no. And they got women driving cars now. <laughs> well, that's dangerous. Oh, um, what? That's suicidal. <laughs> in, in some areas. Yeah, it was all right till they started driving cars. Who? Women. Oh, whack. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Instant. I'm not like that. Even when I was a lad, I used to get left home. If 
from a lady driver. That was what, 100 years ago? So they've been doing it for a while now. <laughs> Shut up, Dave. You're going to get my boys. Yeah. I hope you've got the gist of what I'm trying to do here. Yeah? Oh, never mind. That's a good morning's work, that. I'm chuffing that. I'll send a... I'm looking forward to it drying. So I can add a few, perhaps a few more darts, but you can't do it now because it... Not just because it's wet, but because it... It looks different when it dries. It dries back. Yeah. It's um then you then you look at it again and you think, oh, it could do with a a little bit of this and that. Got what I was gonna do then. Oh yeah. Let's use some more dirty water on the um on the leaf. If I can find it. Hmm. Bit here and there, especially around those vein bits. Just want it to. Hmm. Maybe not. Maybe not. Oh no. Watercolor. Got a bit of tissue. But I can I can see me using either a pastel or a little watercolor brush just to scratch in some extra little values on, on these, on the leaf. Definitely gonna, sorry, that leaf twiggy thing's gonna get bigger. Never mind. It's got like a line there, which is annoying. Hmm. I'm going to eat that after one in a minute. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm done, actually, for now. Mm. I like it. I'm quite pleased with that. I like... I don't think the colours are very good, actually. Really. No, maybe. It's got a, a better tin, tinge to it than it looks on that. Picture. There you go. Well, could be the angle, but it's going to dry back quite nice. So I think it's a, it's a. Like we say, there ain't no easy subjects these days. We're working to extremes. What's the bit of the main thing? We should do that. Yeah. Well, I can't instantly think of anything I want to, I mean, some days I go wash, 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 and it looks a little bit better, but today I can't think of anything that looks what it is. I'm flipping apples. Like I say, if I shorten it or shorten it, the, the edge a bit, it will look nicer. I think it'll look more, you know, just take a bit. I think putting it down there is it's just a nice piece of paper I had, but I think that'll make it look nicer. Yeah, please do that. Very good. Mm. Challenge for us all. Well, <laughs> I can sense your enthusiasm. <laughs> 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 you'll be out there no it's going to dry back quite nicely that huh? hmm. I've put a few more I'll probably straight put a few more um, dark areas in when you look at the screen you, it sort of it looks slightly different. Right. There's an area here. 
Mm -hmm. Like I say, as you'll you'll find when you do it, you you won't be satisfied straight away. I don't think you'll you tend to do this. Look at it, come back, it'll dry back, and you think mm -hmm. need a bit extra here, need a bit extra there. Bit extra, bit extra shade and tone. It'll go on, like I say, it'll go on forever. It's an up. It's not a photograph. Mm -hmm. That's that's the issue. It's a it's a painting. There ain't no right and wrong, as you will find out. Mm -hmm. Over to you, Lloyd. It's over to you guys. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> If you're, um, I think, yeah, if you've got any watercolour pencils, they can, when it's dry, you know, you can subtly tease things in. There ain't no right and, right and wrong, that's the main thing. That'll grow on me, though. Oh, I know what it's going to say quickly. I can find it. about this thing this thing <laughs> hmm. on. What's on? on about that what I was doing and I was using those pastels and uh, it's going around bits in the windows and squishing them in. And the other thing was you can use the flesh. I haven't got any in there. You can use it either in, in the palette or whatever. And paint, you can paint it anywhere. It's really, it doesn't matter. It's subtle, it will just add subtle Things and if you, like these were all too bright in there, so I just used that pencil to knock them all back. It's a good term that knocking back. I can't, I can't paint over it now anyway because I varnished it. Yeah. Got a load of spray varnish on it, so it's ready to frame. I just frame them like that. No glass or anything, and they're lost. They're fine. But the the um the dune um or sand color out the tube paint and the flesh tint you can do that a lot on a picture when you're not happy with it or you think yeah it it needs something give it a go you'll be amazed mm. <laughs> well wow. trust me I'm an artist. <laughs> no, don't go there. Good luck, everybody. Yeah, good luck to you too. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> well, hi. Hi. Next week we're on portrait, I think. Hello. Oh. Oh. Hi. Goody. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Well, it's Steve Lydon, isn't it? Every time I go on, paint my photo, the one that uh, I keep getting, I keep thinking, oh, that's nice, that's nice. When I look at it, it's Steve Lydon or Lydon, whatever his name is. Hi, Steve. <laughs> I must paint. And the latest, and it's either him or the one that we're using a lot lately is a lady called Pauline West. And she lives around in Bournemouth. Mm. So, yeah, mm. her photos are really nice as well. It's, it's the subject and the, the colours and ton, tone. I'm just drawn to them. It's amazing. Mm. How, how, after all this time, I'm still finding portraits or subjects. And, and I think, oh, it's, 
it's the same bloke. I'm still picking out the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, knackered, man. <laughs> I'm hungry. Have a good week. Yeah, and thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah thank you, Dave. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Dave. Yeah. Enjoy the Blackberries. Next week. <laughs> yeah, bye. Don't <laughs> park in it to say, watch where you're parking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank you.